Hello, I'm Stephen Hurley, and welcome to Focus on Wellbeing on the EdCan Network. With over 125 years of experience as a leading independent national voice in Canadian K-12 education, the Canadian Education Association has recently launched the EdCan Network, to support the thousands of courageous educators working tirelessly to ensure that all students discover their place, their purpose, and their path. And that tradition continues as this year we tackle what is arguably one of the most discussed topics affecting the lives of our students, our educators, and the support staff that learn and work each day in Canada's schools and classrooms. Well-being, a key to success, takes place in Toronto on October 5th and 6th and promises to explore solutions for both Indigenous and non-Indigenous schools. Today on the podcast, from Cochrane, Alberta, and the Rocky View School District, it's Brianne Link. Brianne is a teacher, an artist, and facilitator of the CHAT program at Cochrane High School. And in just a second, we'll find out what CHAT stands for. But Brianne, welcome to Focus on Wellbeing on the EdCan Network and Voice Ed Radio. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you have uh, you have quite a story and quite a program to tell us about, and we're really excited to be able to welcome you to to Toronto in October. Uh, let's begin by talking a little bit about your your journey into education. Now, you you're unique in that you come uh, come to the profession with not only a bachelor of education but also a bachelor of fine arts. So, tell us about the confluence of those two things and what brought you to these uh, conversations in this work in education. Uh, well, I had an interest early age in in the arts um, and also in in education, to be honest. And I thought it was good to combine the two and not just rely on uh, a career with a fine arts degree, because sometimes that's a challenge. So um, I went to the University of Lethbridge, which was um, fairly re- well respected for the education degree, and got a, a great um, some great opportunities to meet people in a smaller setting, a smaller university with great class sizes. And very early on, um, took a liking to working with a variety of different kids with complex needs and behavioral issues. So mm. qu- quite quickly into my practicums and teaching experience, I realized that that was sort of where my passion was. Um, adding to the arts part of that, I was able to use um, my skills and what I was learning at the University of Lethbridge to help kids express themselves in in unique ways. So for those kids who weren't interested in talking or who couldn't or couldn't express themselves, they were able to attempt to do that through their work, uh, visually and musically perhaps. So mm-hmm. it right away was very motivating in a different way than I think other teaching uh positions are. So I, I, I right away was interested in pursuing that post-graduation. Um, I did do that. I got in right away with um, sort of in the special ed world and ended up at some very unique teaching positions throughout Alberta, um, homeschool model to um, pilot project for the government and just kind of a wide variety of different things working pretty much always with those complex needs kids and required additional behavioral and emotional support. Um, so after graduating, got those jobs, um, enjoyed them very much, took some time off when I had my children and in that time pursued my own interests in, uh, sort of the art therapy world, working within mm. a variety of different, um, hospital settings. So I worked in psychiatric units, uh, starting healing arts programs. I worked for another organization who helped women and men with eating disorders. And I did that on and off for eight years. And then I landed with Rocky View Schools four years ago. And the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah. 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 Now, what is it about the arts that uh, brings a different perspective to your work and and allows you to be to achieve the success you have with the programs that you're running? What is Mm -hmm. is unique about that? I think it's 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 clear to me, and it always was, but it's particularly clear in the program that we started here right away. Um, high school's hard, and academics are hard for kids nowadays, especially adding the pressures of um, athletics and uh, personal issues, private mm-hmm. home issues, um, all the extracurricular kids that, uh, activities that kids do nowadays. And so it's really challenging for some of these kids to express themselves, to find that balance that they really want in their life between academic success, uh, personal happiness, and uh, 
just overall well-being. So with the arts, it's kind of opened this door for them to express themselves in a nonverbal way, which I think just feels safe. It feel it feels easier, I think, for some of them. As I mentioned, some of the kids will say to me, I either don't, I don't, I'm sick of talking about it, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Um, or mm. the opposite end, they can't. They don't know how to express themselves. They don't know how to say what they're thinking in their head. So using the arts in the program we've created has allowed them sort of that unique way to express themselves. Um, and sort of explore their own feelings without really feeling like uh, so exposed, I think. And of course, for me as the teacher of the program, I'm able to sort of watch that process and some take longer than others. But at the end of the day, we have these uh, works of art that I look at and I don't need any words to describe them. I can look at that painting or, or a drawing and I know what that child is trying to say. Of course, throughout that process, I will say, let's talk about your artwork. And they will, not realizing that, of course, they're really talking about themselves through their artwork. But it just feels safer, I think. So you mentioned uh, safety and you mentioned not feeling exposed. At the same time, for many people, uh, the arts and participating in the arts is a, an act of vulnerability, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. So one of the things that's um, interesting about this chat program that we started, and I should start off, it's chat stands for Cochrane Healing Arts Time. Um, and I say healing arts because it's not just visual arts. So kids do a variety of um, art forms in here. But uh, one of the challenges we had in the beginning when presenting this as a pilot was that we really did not want this uh, program to be part of a child's schedule or for credit. So right. The importance behind that is that they really are creating for the sake of creating in here. It's not for any marks. There's no due dates. There's no credits associated with the program. So I, I sort of describe it like a drop-in center for students within our school. Um, that, I think, is the question you're asking is interesting because it, it it is the first challenge that students are presented with getting here. They either think, oh, I, I, I'm not an artist. I've never taken an art class. But it takes them a little bit of time to get over this hump of really understanding what it means to create for the sake of creating and nothing else. So I'll pose a question in here. We just looked at sort of a, an upcoming project and they'll say things like, what should I do? Or how do you think I should do it? And I say, well, however you think you should do it. And that whole thing is really hard for them because they're so used to being told how to do something a certain way by a certain date for a certain grade. So mm -hmm. once they get over that and they really are just creating on their own timeline, because like I say, there's no due dates. So some kids take months to finish something while the others take a few weeks. That's perfectly all right. Um, and so once they get into that safety feeling where they really understand this is just for me, then I think that some of those um, worries uh, go away. Yeah, I can imagine they would. And and uh, David Kelly, who runs the uh, IDEO organization out of San Francisco Design House, uh, he talks about creative uh, creative confidence. And mm -hmm. and he says when he goes into a, a room full of executives and, and engages them in some of the design process that their company goes through, as soon as he mentions, uh, okay, now we're going to be uh, a little creative here. Uh, the cell phone comes out. Uh, you know, yep. people make all sorts of excuses to uh, wander yep. out of the room. Uh, True. Yeah. And yet, yet you're giving them, uh, you're empowering uh, your students in a way that I believe is is something that's very human to us. So you're giving them access to a part of them that is quite natural, aren't you? Yes. I think so. And I think also with, um, I mean, the program is a lot more than just the arts as well, right? It's it's the space, it's the relationships. And I think the relationship part is actually maybe the forefront and the key to the success in the program is that because the room is is uh, a safe and caring environment and they, they walk in here because they want to, not because someone told them to and it's not a part of their schedule, um, they're building these relationships that they really wouldn't have the opportunity to build anywhere else. So we are a grades nine to 12 high school within Rocky View schools. Um, so, I mean, typically I, you wouldn't have maybe the opportunity to have conversations with a grade nine and a grade 12, but in the chat room that happens all the time. So, and those peer relationships and the peer support are often more powerful than the relationship I have with the students. So I could say the exact same thing to a kid for weeks and giving them advice, but then another peer said it in a different way and they really listen. So, those relationships, um, and again, going back to that sort of, I'm safe in here, I feel okay in here, uh, there's no judgment in here, I come and go from here as I want, it's my choice, and it's it's all at my pace. So some of those conversations are happening uh, sooner for students than others, but by the end of the year, we really, the relationships we've developed and what we learned about one another 
in addition to just ourselves, is really powerful because I think there's also some real safe feelings and confidence in, oh, other kids are are feeling what I'm feeling. Other kids are going through this because I know that now. I've met them. I've talked to them. We've ex- we've talked together. We've expressed things together. So I think they walk out of this room more confident um, and also more aware of sort of the dynamics of our community and in our school as well. Yeah. I'll remind people that you're listening to Focus on well-being on the EdCan Network on and on Voice Ed Radio. We're talking to Brianne Link, who's a teacher at Rocky View Schools, uh, and in particular, Cochrane High School. And she also facilitates a very unique program called CHAT. Uh, uh, remind us again what CHAT stands for. Uh, CHAT stands for Cochrane Healing Arts Time. Okay. So this is a very unique program. I love it. Uh, I used to run an integrated arts program in a middle school myself, and and j- just it that showed me uh, for three years straight the power of the arts and the power of what you're doing there. How do you, in this day and age, though, create that space in a high school when so much of our attention is on um, test scores and on covering the curriculum and getting through the year? How is mm-hmm. it that you're able to step back and convince someone that this is a good idea? Uh, well, f- first of all, we, like working for Rocky View Schools is, is a gift. Um, I'm so happy to, to be working here. They right away were, were supportive of the idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll go back a little bit. It started with um, Dr. John Berger, uh, who's since retired from Rocky View Schools, is now um, ventured out on his own. But he created what is called the SOSQ. It's a student orientation to school questionnaire. And we had our students uh, complete this questionnaire four years ago. Um, At that time, it was about November. So we were two months into the school year, which was great because we were getting to know our students. Um, When we got the results of the questionnaire, I mean, we know that there's issues with, with, with kids in our school, but we weren't aware of how many kids were identifying with anxiety. Mm -hmm. So digging a little deeper, we found out that, um, I mean, these, these were anxieties, both diagnosed and undiagnosed. And again, going back to what I was saying, that school is really quite a bit more challenging, I believe, than even when I went, uh, the extra pressures outside the school. Mm -hmm. So basically with these results, we realized we need to do something like something has to change. We offer a lot at Cochrane High School for extra supports. We're very academic. We're also um, very well known for our athletic program and our performing arts programs. So what else can we do? What, what are those other things we can do to provide a space for the kids who maybe aren't involved in any of those other things? We came up with the idea of this chat program and presented it to Rocky View Schools, who, as I mentioned, was very supportive from the get-go. We did pilot it for a semester to see what its success would be. So, of course, we need to sort of prove that something like this would work. So pushing really hard for it to be, like I had said, a drop-in style and not attached to uh, credits or curriculum was key for us because we really wanted the kids, like I said, to walk in here because they wanted to, not because anyone told them that they had to. So um, the, the pilot was very successful, obviously. So some of the things we were able to track to provide some data, obviously, was attendance. So we had some students who were going from 200 and something absences down to 18 absences. Um, And of course, with increased attendance in school is that connection to school. Mm -hmm. So with that connection to school and being here more often and maybe not in class, but in the chat room, still had them increase their grades because they slowly started going back to class. Or I would help the student bridge a relationship with their classroom teachers and we would find ways to get them back in class or at least doing some academics and just slowly get that sort of back on track for them because it is a bit of a cycle. Uh, They don't attend school. They're more anxious. They're more behind. They're more anxious. So um, those two things, attendance and grades, were easy to track and and they improved and i'll and i'll talk about that in toronto and i'll show that data but um the other thing of course was number one for me is the student input do you like it do you feel better here do you like coming to school more often so we did do um weekly and sometimes daily student assessments really quick sort of like type scales that they would do mm-hmm. um and we were upwards of in the 90 percent average of students really feeling like you know, after leaving the chat room that they had that really good reset time. So before I came in, I sort of felt like this, or I just barely made it to school today, but now I've left and I feel better. Um, They might come back throughout the day. Maybe that feeling didn't last all day, but that's okay because the room is open. So uh, it's in, I should mention, it's never closed. Like I I don't take a lunch break or any of those things. The room is open for students at any time. That's really key. So um, it's, it, 
to answer your question, I guess, would be that I, I'm lucky to have the support of Rockview Schools, but also it, it comes down to a lot of the support at your school level from your, your principal and assistant principals and supporting sort of the mental health needs of their students as well as their academic needs, and I'm, I'm lucky enough to have that. Well, that's quite a, quite a story. And, and you've told us what chat is. Um, I'm interested mm -hmm. uh, in some of the assumptions that people that are not uh, as intimately tied to the program as you are and your students are. What are some of the, the assumptions they make? Uh, in other words, what, what do they think it is, but it really isn't? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, I really pay a lot of attention to that because I really want people to understand it and, and hopefully appreciate and support it. Uh, I think from the get-go, one of my worries was that it would be, uh, people would assume that it was like a hangout space. It really isn't. I, and that, I say, for I, I don't want teachers to think that, but I also don't want students to think that. Um, we hope that this is not a space they use to avoid classes and avoid work. So that for me is different with every student. There's some I push more than others, depending on their needs and where they're at. But I think the biggest assumption is that um, negative that I would, assumption I would hope they don't have is that it's a hangout space. So we are doing project-based work in here. We are working on strategies and practicing strategies they've learned with our guidance uh, counselors and perhaps outside supports that they've they've learned in different treatment facilities and whatnot. Um, but we 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 are doing important work in here. Um, it's If you could see the space, I think you'd understand it better. People always make that comment. I'm so glad I saw it and got to, got to sort of see what it looks like. But um, I think that that would be the biggest uh, maybe misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. The other thing I always like to tell people when I'm describing the program is that I, I'm not teaching art curriculum. Um, I, I'm, I am obviously a certified art teacher, but I don't teach the art curriculum. We do have an amazing art program here with a teacher who does that. So I think that goes back to one of your other questions where kids say, oh, I can't draw and I can't paint and I've never taken art. It doesn't matter because it's not about the curriculum and it's not about sort of an, an end goal with the actual work. The end goal is really, it's up to the student. You know, what is their needs emotionally? And so um, we're, we're using the arts as a tool to explore and improve many, many things, but it's it's just the tool that we're using. So hopefully people understand that. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, such a such an important part of the ecosystem of any uh, social environment, I think, that ability to it's uh, not separate yourself, but find a place where you can do something different like that. And uh, yeah. for you, the connection between chat and what is happening there uh, mm -hmm. And the the mental and emotional well being of your students. Uh, could you draw a little bit of a, a straighter line? Not that it is a straight line, but uh, just make some uh, some uh, connections between those two things. Between myself and the students. Between the um, oh, I want to get to that in a second because that's fascinating. Okay. Um, but just to the the, uh, the emotional well being of your students, the mental health, uh, because that's what we're, we're coming to Toronto to talk about. And yes. I don't want to give away your presentation. I don't want you to give yeah. away your presentation. But what are some of the the, the things that um, th that you can hang your hat on in terms of the chat program and the the oh. mental health of your students? Um, well, I you know, I mean, we saw the need, and and we've and we've created this amazing program that is working. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as I mentioned, like the data that we've collected in terms of our attendance improvements is is awesome. Uh, the data we've collected on Mark's improvement is awesome. Um, and even for example, I like to comment like our two, our last two valedictorians from the school have been chat referred kids. Wow. Um, so we, I think that actually that actually reminds me of sort of your last question. Um, you know, a lot of the chat students are very academic, successful students as well, because, of course, going back to that anxiety piece, um, they're just struggling to find sort of that balance between academic and high school achievement and what that means to them, but also emotional well-being and that balance in life. So I, I often say, and I've said this in the videos that the CA did, is that, um, you know, what is what is high school success? It, a lot of people would probably answer that right away by talking about their marks and their grades, but to me it isn't. Like, I want the students in Cochrane High and the CHAT program to graduate saying, yep, I, I, had, I had success at Cochrane High academically, uh, maybe through athletics, but also, like, I enjoyed my school experience. I feel connected to my school. Yeah. I feel connected to the community of Cochrane. Um, I overall felt good about my experience there because I think that what we were seeing was that some of these kids that were disengaging from school – I mean, what they're doing outside of school isn't going to be as safe and caring and successful as what we could offer them in school. So um, 
just getting them in our building, I feel like is a win. So if that means spending the whole day in the chat room because they were having a rough time or they had a rough night, maybe they didn't go to all their classes, but they did come to school. So they've made that connection that day. And so we've won already with that. And we work on that. We bridge off of that and we try and, you know, expand that to other teacher relationships and, and connections throughout our school and community as well. Yeah. And so it's so talking about relationships, I watched the videos that uh, the CEA had done and uh, uh, you're very articulate about this program, but so are your students. And uh, mm -hmm. what I did pick up is that sense of pride that you had. I don't know if you picked it up when you watched the videos, but there was a look in your eye and a little glint uh, that said, yeah, you know, this is this is good stuff. And uh, is is that a is that a relationship? And I know that you're forming a relationship maybe that uh, other teachers might not have. But do you no. find that that uh, sense of trust that you're building in your students uh, is something that carries over into other classes as well? Yeah, I think, I mean, to answer your, sorry, <laughs> to answer okay. your question first, I um, I love my job. I'm often emotional about it. I had some emotional days on that filming day, actually, but I um, I, I find that like I'm lucky. I, I know I know that I don't have a typical teaching position or role, and I am lucky enough to be given the time to have those extra conversations with kids that other teachers don't get. The bell rings, and another thirty something kids walk into their classroom mm -hmm. for that class that they need to teach. I am I have been given the gift of time with these kids, and I very much appreciate that. Um, I love coming to work every week. Um, I feel so so lucky and fortunate to have the job that I do. And that being said, yes, I can take the relationship that I build on with these kids and I try and expand that with other teachers, as I mentioned, not having the time. So we do we do some special things throughout the year where we invite teachers in um, to try and sort of share some of our work if the student's comfortable. One mm -hmm. of the things that we do that's kind of our biggest thing is the... Um, um, we have an end show, like a gallery opening, and we try and te uh, treat it as professional as possible. It's really special for some of these kids. Uh, some of them maybe haven't celebrated a lot of things maybe in their life, especially academic and school related, but this is something special for them. They've spent the year achieving other things, personal things and emotional kind of feats besides just their academics. So we put on a nice show, we dress up, uh, we, we print professional invitations and it's invitation only. I do like telling sort of an example, of a story of a couple of years ago, we, we uh, gave out our invitations and one of our students, I, she said, I'm going to invite my parents. And I said, oh, that's great. Lots of kids are inviting their parents. And uh, her dad phoned and said, you know, this is, I'm so-and-so's dad. And I got this invitation to celebrate something. And I said, yeah, I said, she's done great work. And he had this long pause and he repeated her name. And he said, that's my daughter. I said, yeah, no, I know her well. And and then he got really emotional on the phone and he started to cry. He said, and she was a great tense student at the time. She said, and he said, in 10 years of education, I've never once been called to the school to celebrate my daughter. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we have those moments and we have those stories and we have these moments with the parents and the school now. So now not only have we got this great relationship with the student within the walls, but now we're starting to open that and expand that to parent relationships. Because you can imagine, um, you know, what's the parent relationship to the school all these years, you know, perhaps getting calls for attendance issues or behavior issues and things. And that turns negative as well. So we've opened the door to these parents to come in and see a different type of success and a different type of work that their child is doing. And that goes home. And so I, I, I think there's some comments in the videos on your on your website as well from parents saying, you know, we're fighting less at home. Mm -hmm. My kid is happier to go to school, like which takes the stress off of me. We're having a more positive relationship in our own private home. So it's kind of neat to see how that expands um, beyond just the walls of our school, but into relationships with their families as well is pretty special. Well, you know, it's it's amazing because that story you told reminds me so much of uh, doing performances and musicals and uh and different arts-based evenings in my own career. And there was always, always a parent who came up at the end and said, I didn't know they had it in them. That was yep. a different child up there. And yep. it's, on the one hand, it's sad. On the other hand, mm -hmm. it's very hopeful that, and, and it just underlies and underlines the, um, why we do what we do. Yes. Yeah. I agree. And I'm, I'm a parent as well. And I think that, you know, you do, you see, a, you see a different, 
the kid you know at home is, of course, the kid that you know best and parents know their kid best. But you often hear, oh, they're so different at school and they behave different. Like, it's nice for parents to see that. I mean, as much as you say it could be sad at times, a lot of parents have said, you know, we struggled. And would I like my child to connect with me first? Of course. But if they're not going to, I'm sure happy that it's with another uh, safe and caring adult within the walls of their school. Because that's, you know, for often most kids, the second place they spend most of their time. So... Um, it's it's all around just been one of the most rewarding uh, professional jobs of my life. Like I've had a lot of them in, in variety of, um, you know, the other jobs I mentioned at the hospitals and whatnot. But this is just, it's it's special. Well, Brianne Link, you are special. And, and th- <laughs> this time has been special for me. And I hope that other people listening um, are inspi- as inspired by what you're doing as I am. And you're coming to Toronto October 5th and 6th. So people that are coming to, to your session uh, will be inspired. Are, are you going to provide them with some ideas on how they might be able to go out and start something like this in their own context? Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm presenting with uh, Anne Crom, who is a principal at our middle, one of our middle schools in Rocky View schools as well. So we're going to try and touch on sort of the how that would work in a middle school um, up to high school. I, I also will mention there's now six chat programs in the province of Alberta. So there are other divisions and there are other schools that have taken to this idea, okay. and of course they morph it to their school and what works best for them and what staff member they have. So we are going to touch on that and show that it really is something that can be implemented in my opinion, in any school. And I do think that, I mean, this is why you're running the symposium theme this year. I mean, we're seeing this need in students and and the importance in student wellness. So I'm really excited to present and share our data and share sort of how we, right from the beginning, uh, started it, uh, what our successes were, what our challenges were as well, because we did we did have those too. So we're going to kind of share the whole thing and, and our data and some student work as well. So I think it'll be, I'm hoping that it will be motivating for, for those who attend. So the event is Wellbeing, a Key to Success, sponsored by the Canadian Education Association and the EdCan Network. The place is uh, the Holiday Inn, Toronto International Airport and Conference Centre. And the dates are October 5th and 6th, which is coming up. And uh, we invite everyone to come and meet Brianne uh, in person and uh, hear her story in person because I can't imagine that it won't be even more compelling than it is right now. (laughs) Uh, So thank you for taking time to uh, be with us today and I'll look forward to meeting you in October. Thank you so much for having me. So the symposium once again, October 5th and 6th at the airport Holiday Inn in Toronto. Be sure to visit edcan.ca forward slash well-being for more information on the symposium, including details on how you can register, a full list of sessions, and bios on all of our speakers, including today's guest, Brianne Link. I'm Stephen Hurley, and this is the EdCan Network on Voice Ed Radio. Your voice is right here.